Hello! On the day of 23rd of June, we had a lot of readings which are worth to be mentioned. However, I will start with two strong earthquakes. First one was the 7.2 magnitude quake in the East Pacific Ocean. Second one was a 7.9 magnitude in Alaska. But just as I said, there were other events which are worth to be recorded. Two of them are visible on the low energy proton flux graph from a satellite. First, there was a down spike of protons at lowest energy bands, which was however connected with the increase of particles at higher energies. And couple hours later, on the same graph appeared the largest spike which I ever recorded. Notice that this enormous spike was connected with a small increase of the density and much bigger jumps on velocity and temperature. It is clear that those particles were extremely energetic. However, much more interesting readings were recorded by ACE a couple minutes later. As you can see, the density jumped rapidly to more than 100 units, what was connected with a rapid drop of solar wind speed. Notice that those readings appeared here around half past 10 to 11.15 UTC. Now let's look at the SWMF animation. First impact on the magnetosphere took place as after more than an hour since the density spike was recorded by ACE. And the second spike appeared here a couple minutes before 13 UTC. That's almost two hours of difference. However, we won't see the entire impact on the new SWMF monitors as they went through some kind of reset and half of the readings showing the impact are gone. Set. Thankfully there are still the old monitors and the impacts are visible here without any problems. However, the wave appeared here some 30 minutes earlier than on the second monitor. Quite spectacular. If you wonder why it took so long for those waves to travel such short distance, you should look at the solar wind velocity readings.
those waves were extremely slow. However, if I would have to point out the cause of those quakes, or at least the first one in New Zealand, I would show you this spike of electrons, which was recorded right at the time when the quake took place. In the difference to other spikes in this day, this one was without any doubts geo-effective. Other factor which I have to mention was the shift of IMF magnetic components couple minutes before the quake. But look at this sudden jolt. It was without any doubts caused by the electron spike, which was recorded at the same time. But let's move to current events. It looks that the CME, which was created by the filament eruption, finally arrived. We can see a clear signature of interplanetary shock. However, the impact didn't cause too many geomagnetic disturbances as the BZ magnetic component reached only minus 5 nanoteslas, what is not enough to cause a geomagnetic storm. However, GOES satellites recorded some small instabilities at the time of impact. but they were just minor. Some time ago, I've said that the flux tubes which are visible on current ring monitors started to behave strangely, as their connectivity point moved from the day-night reconnection area much deeper into the night side of our planet. I think that it is the best moment to explain it. Some of you should remember when I said that the negative flow energy field, field line likes to connect itself to the day-night reconnection point on the west side of Earth. However, at the time when I made this statement, I didn't think about the location of the low-energy field source. And during the time which passed since I was discussing the equatorial magnetic connections, the location of low-energy field source changed. Or actually it was the Earth which changed mostly its position as it is moving along its orbit much faster than the source of low energy field. Right now the source is affecting our planet from an angle. And this angle is probably the reason why the flux tubes started to connect themselves deeper in the night side. So, at the time when low energy field source was placed directly behind Earth, the flux tubes were connecting like this. But right now the direction of field lines is different and looks like this.
This change is simply just another proof that the low energy field has its source, which can be tracked. Anyway, you can watch how looks the angle of the negative low energy field flux tube connection on the new SWMF magnetopause position signet. As you can see, it is pointing more or less towards the direction which I've pointed out before. But what is more important is the fact that this angle is causing a serious side shift of the magnetosphere. I call it BY wobble. Another effect of the low energy field source affecting us from the side can be seen on the new SWMF magnetosphere Z-CAT monitor. Because of the low energy field influence, we can see that sector boundaries appear in the middle of magnetotail and divide it along the x-dimensional axis. However, it looks that the boundary appears sometimes on one side of magnetotail and sometimes on another. As I said not so long ago, particles on both sides of the magnetotail can't mix with each other until there won't be a magnetic reconnection which will connect both halves. Something very funny is happening right now with the magnetic polarity of the Sun. On different monitors we can see completely different readings. Those are made by Gong. And this one is made by Lockheed Martin. Just as this one. Or those two. this one also. When you will compare the readings made by Lockheed Martin with the other ones, you will notice that they don't work with each other too well. For example here, the black field lines are the negative ones. So according to this monitor, Earth is placed in the part of IMF with negative polarity. At the same time, Enlil spiral shows that Earth should be placed right now in the positive part of IMF. And those monitors show again something different than Gong and Lockheed Martin. Anyway, I will concentrate on the Lockheed Martin readings, which are being used by SolarSoft. According to those monitors, almost entire surface of the Sun is right now negatively charged. Positive polarity is much smaller and remains on the solar equator. On those monitors, the borders between opposite polarities are visible nicely. What is interesting in those images is the fact that not so long ago the coronal hole which is facing us almost directly in this moment was a source of field lines with positive polarity.
However, in the moment when those positive field lines were about to connect with our planet, they simply disappeared. On the ecliptic view, it is visible even better. Poof! Gone. Okay, enough for today. Class dismissed. Peace.